Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and there have been more and more leaks coming out recently about macOS 10.15, and even some leaks regarding the iPad potentially getting some features that will work in tandem with the next version of macOS, including things like mouse support and including a external display extension for your Mac to your iPad. And speaking of the iPad, one of the first leaks I wanted to cover is that macOS 10.15 will enable iPad users to take a Mac window and have it run directly on their iPad. And basically with this new feature, you'll be able to send a macOS window to any external display, but particularly this is targeting iPad displays. Apparently to enable this feature, you will just hover over the green button that is already found on macOS app to enable split view and from that menu you will see the option to send that window to an external display and apparently this feature will only show one mac os window at a time so you can't take your whole mac os desktop and port it over to the ipad which is very similar to a way that a current product that i use now works luna display where you just plug in this little adapter on your mac and then all of a sudden you get your full mac os desktop running on your ipad as an external display or a mirrored display Display, and you get full touch controls on that with Luna Display, which gives you full access to your Mac OS desktop. So you could open up Final Cut Pro, start editing a video, and then switch over to the Safari version of Mac OS, and then go on from there to open other Mac OS windows or go into the Finder. It is very much like mirroring the entire display or extending that whole entire desktop to a second display. What this sounds like is that you'll be able to send one Mac application over at a time, and it's unclear if that Mac application will stay with the iPad, even if you go out of the network range, which I really don't think it will. I really think it will work over a wireless signal. So your Mac is doing the processing power while your iPad is just displaying the window. This report also mentions that with this new feature, the Apple Pencil will work on your iPad to control an application on the Mac, so this could be a really great option for photo editors, for video editors, and especially for people who use their iPads and their Macs for graphic design for drawing. So now they can purchase a Mac, they can have their iPad, and then they don't have to buy something like a Wacom tablet. They'll just have their Mac and their iPad to work in this seamless experience together as a drawing tablet for their computer. I'd also like to point out one more thing in this report, and that is that with this new system, Apple will be adding a refinement to the multitasking on Mac. So currently, if you want to do a split view in Mac OS, you have to hold down that green button for an extended period of time and then select another app to go into that tiled split view mode. With this new version, Apple will kind of be stealing a feature from Windows where you would drag an application to the side of the screen and it will instantly snap into place. So it will be a very quick way to organize your windows in a tiled view on Mac OS. This leads me to another rumor that might work in tandem with these features and that is that the iPad will be gaining mouse support through the accessibility options on the iPad. So it's no secret that Apple hasn't added any sort of mouse support to iOS yet. They've kind of been hesitant to add those features because they believe that iPad is a touch first and basically a touch only operating system. However, Apple does seem to be relenting a little bit by adding this mouse support to the accessibility menu. So this will be a feature that people who have accessibility needs will enable or pro users who are willing to go into the settings will enable and then the average consumer who doesn't really have to know about these settings who don't plan to use a mouse with their iPad don't have to worry about enabling so it will still be a touch first and basically a touch only operating system for the vast majority of people out there. But I think mouse and trackpad support is a great option for people who want to use it. Some Mac apps really excel because they have a dedicated pointer device that you really can't get the same control over with an iPad using touch. I also think this will work in tandem with that sidecar feature. So if you have a mouse or trackpad connected to your iPad, then you wouldn't have to grab the mouse that's already connected to your Mac desktop if you're porting over a windowed version of a Mac application. Some of those wouldn't work as well with touch, especially with the smaller touch targets. So by adding in mouse support, they can also make these sidecar applications much more useful on an iPad. One of the things I really wonder about if Apple is adding mouse support, if a third-party developer, maybe someone like Logitech, or maybe even Apple themselves, 
will release an updated keyboard with trackpad support, either through the smart connector or through a Bluetooth keyboard. And I think that would be a really cool option for pro users or even for people who do have those accessibility problems where Apple is already adding this feature, it would be cool to see Apple make a dedicated smart keyboard that still connects to the smart connector, but also has a built-in trackpad for people who wanna use it. Okay, moving away from the iPad back to the Mac, and that is that Mac OS 10.15 will be borrowing some more iOS features with the addition of Siri shortcuts. So it's no secret that with Mac OS 10.15, Apple will be enabling third-party developers to port over their iPad applications over to Mac OS. We've seen some of this already with Apple's own news app, voice memos app, stocks app, and home app. And now that this option is being available to third-party developers, Apple is thinking about bringing over the Siri shortcuts feature so that developers can take advantage of all of the built-in Siri shortcuts that would be available on their iPad apps and still have those shortcuts be accessible on the Mac. According to the sources, these Siri shortcuts would only work with the Marzipan versions of these applications on Mac OS, so you couldn't really mix over the Mac OS applications like Final Cut Pro with a application from the iPad and then kind of combine those into Siri shortcuts. Unfortunately, apparently that will not be available, but maybe Apple will be expanding the Siri shortcuts feature to include Mac OS apps in a later update. Honestly, Siri shortcuts is a super powerful automation tool on iOS, and honestly, I don't really use it enough. I do use it for a few simple things, but I really would like to expand my use cases for it but I do think it is a smart move bringing it over to the Mac, especially just for the Siri voice activation. So you could still bark commands at your Mac and then say if you have a home kit setup where you're turning off the lights or closing the blinds, those would be able to work on your Mac and you wouldn't have to pick up your iPhone when you're already using your computer. Furthermore, another feature that Apple will be taking from iOS and moving over to the Mac is the screen time feature. So screen time was one of those features that was enabled in iOS 12 to help us keep better management of how we're using our phones and to set app limits and time limits for those addictive applications, especially if you had children, now you have a parental tool that could help you monitor their phone usage. Well, Apple is looking to add that same exact functionality to Mac OS with the screen time feature being added to a system preferences window. And this seems like a good feature to add considering that when you use screen time on your iOS devices, you can monitor your iPhone and iPad usage, but you can't monitor your Mac usage. So if you're really trying to cut down on your screen time and you have all of the devices in the Apple ecosystem, it would be helpful to know how much time you're spending on certain applications on the Mac. Also again, another way for parents to monitor their kids' usage of their devices. Another change coming to Mac OS is that the iMessages app on Mac OS will finally get those screen effects. So if you love all those screen effects from the iOS version of messages, like sending fireworks, balloons, or lasers, all of those screen effects will be making its way to the Mac OS version of Messages. Honestly, I'm surprised it took them this long to port over what seems to be a seemingly simple feature to Mac OS, but at least you will no longer be getting the dreaded parentheses sent with lasers message. Apple will also be adding some new features if you are an Apple Watch owner to Mac OS 10.15, and this has to do with Apple Watch authentication. So if you currently are an Apple Watch and a Mac user, you know that you can enable in system preferences to have your Mac on lock if you are wearing an Apple Watch. Apple will supposedly be expanding this feature to not only work with your lock screen password, but also also to work in other instances. So say if you're logging into Safari, by wearing your Apple Watch by being close to your Mac, it could autofill your Safari passwords. It could also work to authorize Apple Pay payments on your Mac, and maybe even work further with third-party applications like a password manager like 1Password or any other application that requires a password. That way you can quickly log into your Mac without having to worry about typing in your password. And I think this is a great feature to expand upon currently because unlocking your Mac with your Apple Watch just works super fast, super simple, and I really like this feature. And for a lot of Mac users out there, they don't have access to the latest MacBook Pro or the latest MacBook Air that have the Touch ID sensor already built in. And especially if you are a desktop Mac user, there is no way to currently authenticate that with Touch ID. So I think expanding these features 
of unlocking your Mac to a biometric way by wearing your Apple Watch is a pretty smart move by Apple. But enough about what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What features are you currently excited for for Mac OS 10.15? What do you think about the current rumors, especially the rumors that the iPad will be getting mouse support? If you like the video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, including future coverage of Mac OS 10.15 and iOS 13, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna support the channel in any way, make sure you check out the links in the description. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.